Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome to the last lecture. Um, okay. So, uh, so, so last time we uh, we we went through the the laws of uh, black hole thermodynamics, and we saw okay various derivations for them, and so on. So, let me just. Uh, possibly the, the most uh, substantial two of them were, were the first law, which says something like this. Delta A horizon on before G Newton is equal to delta M or delta energy, if you wish. And then we had the, the second law, who told us that the, the area of, of, uh, of, uh, of the event horizon increases in any classical process. Um, and in order to, to prove this law, you know, through whatever method, say the, the physical process view of the first law or the world method, we needed to use the Einstein equations. So we needed to use the equations of motion. Okay? Uh, sorry, there's a display on the screen. Can you remove it? Thank you. Okay, good. So, um, okay, so, so, so this is the first law and we use the, the Einstein equations to, um, to derive it. And um, so today I, 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 I wanted to just end this discussion of the, you know, the, the, the laws of thermodynamics with some interesting twist on the first law proposed by Jacobson. In 95, so GRQC 95040, um, which is in a certain sense a converse of the first law. So, so, so basically, his idea is uh, is the following. I mean, if if you're taking this 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 uh, what what this first law of black hole thermodynamics is telling you uh, seriously. So, so you really think of this as a temperature, so actually Hawking did show that this is the actual temperature of the black hole because it radiates and blah, blah, blah. And therefore you think of this as an actual entropy, so log of the number of uh, microstates of whatever quantum gravity system that, that you might be having. Then if you're taking this seriously, of course the first law is, is, is just an identity. Any physical system has to obey it. Uh, and therefore, uh, so, so, so maybe the, 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 the more correct way to think about this is, is to take this as a given. And then, uh, the point is that uh, if you're taking the first law as a given, uh, then, uh, and you, you have some knowledge about how the entropy of the system depends on, say, the energy, the volume, or whatever, or like, uh, parameters that, uh, that, that you're having, then you can f use the first law to, to actually derive the equation of state for the system. So, so, so his idea is to actually start from the first law and try to derive the Einstein equation as some sort of equation uh, of state for your you know, quantum gravity system. So, uh, which, 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 which basically comes from the condition of local equilibrium. So, so, of course, this, this, uh, this holds in equilibrium. And, uh, okay, so, so very heuristically, if I'm going to read, uh, write the, the heat flow as T uh, delta S, uh, then, uh, well, so, so you can think of heat as some sort of energy flow between the unobservable degrees of freedom of your system and then he makes some analogy, or one, it's not, it's not only him, many people made an analogy between um, um, this sort of flow of energy across horizons. So, 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 you, so you can think of horizons as somehow hiding the microscopic information away from you. And therefore, you can heuristically think of this heat as energy that flows across a causal horizon. Um, uh, okay, so energy flow across 
some horizon h, and, uh, and uh, Jacobson took this, this horizon not, not to be an event horizon, but actually a local regular horizon. So, so a horizon that's associated with, uh, with some observers that do not explore the entire space-time. And, uh, and as for the entropy, so, uh, so basically he took this to be uh, the degrees of freedom that sort of hide behind the horizon. Uh, behind the horizon. Uh, so, so whatever theory of quantum gravity that, uh, that you might have, it should, it should tell you what, what, what this entropy is. But uh, it's possible to sort of uh, argue that the entropy has to be proportional to the cross-sectional area of, uh, of the horizon with some, um, so divided by L Planck squared for dimensional uh, reasons, and then uh, you might have some proportionality constant in front. Uh, the reason that it should be proportional to the area is because, um, as we already mentioned a little bit, I mean, you can sort of think as, uh, as the black hole entropy, okay. Um, maybe this is, okay. So, 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 so you can think, okay, you, you, when you have a horizon, so you're not, ex uh, um, a linear horizon, so you're not exploring the, the entire space-time, and you have some quantum field theory, so in this weakly curved background, you, you do have an entanglement entropy associated to, to, to the entropy of the quantum fields that, that you do not see, that are behind the horizon, and this entanglement entropy is basically proportional to, to, to the area, it's divergent, but, uh, but, uh, but you're assuming that uh, in your theory of quantum gravity you're having some sort of cutoff, on that divergence, and, and you're going to call that cutoff L Planck. I mean, that's, that's naturally the, the, the Planck length. And then, okay, so, so, so the idea is that you, you should be thinking of, of, of this entropy. So this entropy is defined in, in quantum gravity, whatever it is, but it should be proportional to the area of the event horizon divided by, by this natural cutoff that you have with some proportionality constant. And, uh, and as for the temperature, you're going to be, uh, take it to be proportional to the acceleration of the Rindler observer. As usual. So, um, so, uh, so, so basically the setup that he's considering is, uh, is the following. So, uh, so he's considering uh, some arbitrary space-time point P. And then, uh, so just using the equivalence principle, the, the, the space-time is uh, locally flat around P. And, uh, um, and he considers uh, a set of um, null surfaces. So, so, so you have some space-like surface at, at, at that passes through P. Let me call it big P. This, uh, this, this is a two-dimensional surface if we're in four space-time dimensions. And then you have some uh, null hypersurfaces that intersect at P. I mean, all that I'm saying is based on flat space. Okay, so, so in flat space, you know that you can do this. These are, these are just the, the, the Rindler coordinates on, on flat space that, that we already discussed. Uh, so, so using this equivalence to, to flat space, so, so he's imagining that he's having this, uh, this uh, this pair of, of local Rindler horizons that are intersecting at P in such a way that the, the expansion and the shear are approximately are exactly zero at P. And then uh, this thing is supposed to be uh, a killing horizon for some approximate killing vector C that goes like that. And it should be clear that, uh, okay, if your space-time is smooth, then uh, you can always uh, locally do this. And this sort of smoothness is, is, is supposed to be connected to the local equilibrium condition that you might be having. Okay? Good. So, uh, so that's uh, uh, the setup. And, uh, and then what he wants to do, he wants to consider 
some flux of uh, uh, you know matter energy that passes through here with some um, T mu nu. And, uh, and then he wants to impose the first law with, with, with this assumption. And sort of the, uh, the, the basic physical idea of what is happening is, is that uh, in order for uh, the, uh, the expansion to be zero at P, Somehow, the, uh, the passage of matter has to focus these this horizon generators in such a way, in precisely the correct way, so as to make theta equal to zero at p. Okay? And this is how he gets some sort of relationship between the geometry and the matter, uh, matter energy flux, which then will end up being this, this, uh, the, the, the precisely the Einstein equation. Uh, okay, so, uh, so, so actually let's, uh, let's look at the, the calculation. This is just recycling the, uh, the physical process version of, of the first law uh, in, uh, in sort of reverse. So, so delta Q, which is the um, energy flux of, of matter um, through this past horizon, so it's integral. Uh -huh. So, so you're, you're, you're assuming that, uh, that uh, these, uh, these generators are uh, finely parameterized with some parameter lambda, as, as we had uh, yesterday, and that uh, this uh, xi is equal to minus k lambda k nu, where this is the normal to the, to the null surface, and the minus comes from the fact that we're, we're actually on, on, on the, to the past of the point. Okay, so, so the flux is as before, just this one. Okay, it's t into the killing vector into the normal to, to the horizon, and as I said, the killing vector is minus k lambda um, k nu. So this thing is minus k integral lambda d lambda d squared a. Uh, k mu, k nu, t mu. Uh, now, uh, by definition, the, the, uh, the variation of the area of the horizon is, is just integral d lambda of the expansion times d2a. And, uh, and uh, the expansion, of course, uh, satisfies Rai-Chaudhuri's equation because that's just some geometrical equation. So, um, so, so theta satisfies d theta by d lambda is minus a half theta squared uh, minus sigma mu nu sigma mu nu bah, minus r mu nu k mu you? And then since we're actually very close to the bifurcation surface at which both theta and sigma vanish, we just drop these terms because they're small. So, so we approximately have that uh, d theta by d lambda is this, which implies that sort of two linear order theta is about minus lambda r mu nu k mu. Okay, now, uh, so now we want to plug in, uh, so, so our, um, uh, the first law relation reads delta Q uh, times um, uh, so uh, it's TDS where T is KH bar over two pi times eta times, I think I missed some factors here, delta A horizon over, there should have been a Planck length squared, what did I do? 
Uh, ah, okay, sorry. So, so it seems I changed notation, so I didn't put an L Planck here. So, so eta contains a one over L, L Planck squared. I mean, but, uh, but it should be there. It should definitely be there. It's, it's just that I absorbed it into eta. Okay, so, uh, so, so this is uh, what the first law looks like when, um, uh, when you're assuming that, uh, that, that the entropy is proportional to the area of the event horizon. So, so now we want to equate these two things. And, uh, and then uh, what we're getting is the following. Uh, so we're getting that minus k integral lambda d lambda d2a k mu, k nu, t mu nu is equal to k h bar eta over 2 pi times, uh, I have a minus from here, lambda d lambda r mu nu, k mu, k nu, d squared a. So, um, yeah, I, I should have mentioned, so, 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 so this accelerated observers, of course, their, their acceleration depends on how close they actually are to the bifurcation surface, and, and remember that the acceleration diverges once you're close to the horizon. But, you know, as long as you're using the same observer to measure the energy flux and, and the expansion, it, it doesn't matter, it, it just drops up, as you see from here. Okay. Okay, so this is the first law relation, and now we want it to hold for any spo uh, space-time point P for a sort of any way that you might have chosen this, uh, this, uh, this local Rindler horizon. So, so this should hold for any P, K mu, null. And it's clear that the, the relationship will hold, provided that uh, T mu nu so maybe I should write it over here, provided that 2 pi over eta h bar t mu nu is equal to r mu nu plus some arbitrary function times g mu nu. Now, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this function is actually not completely arbitrary because you know that, uh, that the matter stress tensor should be conserved locally. Therefore, you can show using this that f has actually to be minus r over 2 plus some constant, which I'm going to call lambda. So, so plugging this form in, what you're getting is that the Einstein tensors, so r mu nu minus a half r over two g mu nu plus lambda g mu nu is equal to pi over h bar eta t mu nu matter. And of course, this is nothing but Einstein's equation with a cosmological constant which you cannot determine. Uh, and, and this thing over here, well, this thing is just going to be by definition 8 pi g Newton. This eta, which is basically given to you by your quantum theory and whatever, is, is going to be determining the, uh, the, the low energy Newton's constant. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, so, so, so this is basically the argument, and uh, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a really nice twist on, uh, on the story because it, it, uh, it basically shows you that Einstein's equations, I, I mean, the, that, that gravity is not a fundamental force. You, you just got it some sort of consistency condition by imposing some sort of local equilibrium at, uh, at arbitrary space-time points, and you got from this, the first law, of course, should hold in any quantum system. Okay, you, you plugged in the area, so you really don't know, you don't really have a definition of what this entropy is supposed to mean. There was a lot of waving into assigning this, these meanings, but, um, but these meanings are uh, sort of sound correct. 
and, and, and of course we know that in, in string theory where we can give uh, precise meanings to, 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 to entropies and then we see that they're holographically dual to areas of event horizons, this, this, the, the, this stuff is correct. So, okay, so, so, so what, what this very strongly suggests is, is that, uh, yeah, that, that gravity is not a fundamental force that the Einstein equation is just some consistency condition in order for you to have some local equilibrium associated to, to having a nicely smooth uh, space time. And as a consequence, you shouldn't be, probably not be quantizing the gravitons because you know, they're, they're not fundamental fields in your theory. So, so, so that was the conclusion. Uh, but yeah, so, so, so I think this is, uh, this is very nice, but uh, as you see, there are a lot of assumptions going on in, 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 in this assignment over here, but it, it sort of sounds correct. Um, okay, so, so this is all I, I wanted to say for, for the laws of, uh, of black hole thermodynamics. Uh, are there any questions? Oh, why? I mean, you, you've assumed this. So if you have higher derivative corrections, you shouldn't be using the area, you should be using the Wald functional. It's an input. So no, it, it, it can, I, I don't think it can be used to rule out uh, stuff. But uh, I, for me, this is just an, an interesting point of view that, that, that shows that maybe this is the correct way to think about the Einstein equations. And, and about the first law. Because, uh, yeah, uh, the, the first law is something that just is, 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 is valid by definition. Okay. Good, so, uh, so if there are no uh, further questions, uh, so in the remaining um, uh, I have a time, question. yes. Sorry, um, what happened to the L Planck squared factor? In eta I, sorry, I, I absorbed it into eta. I had some inconsistency in my notation. So, where is it in the, so in eta the now end. is dimension full. Oh, I see. And, and, and then you see that it, uh, it ends up here, and this thing is dimensionful. It's, it's the Newton constant. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, good. So, uh, so, uh, so, so much for, uh, for uh, 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 black hole uh, thermodynamics. So, so now I wanted to do uh, something, uh, uh, well, so much for black hole thermodynamics. Well, I, I mean, I, I should say a, a few things. So, 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 so of course, the, the stuff that I, I discussed is, 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 is kind of old, but it has been hugely important in the development of, of, uh, of, uh, of quantum gravity. Okay, so, so, so black hole thermodynamics relates these thermodynamic quantities to, you know, geometrical quantities in, in quantum gravity. Uh, and, and that's done by actually taking seriously these, these objects that appear. The area of the event horizon really is an entropy. And, uh, and of course, uh, in order to find uh, what exactly it means, so, so, so of course, the, uh, these laws were, uh, I think, early 70s, maybe 74 or something like this. It took more than 20 years for the first microscopic accounting of, of black hole entropy in string theory. By, by Strominger and Waffa. So, so actually being able to write as is log of the number of microstates of, of some system. And for that, you know, you need to have string theory, you need to have D-brains, a quick coupling, the D-brains have a, well, some, some description in terms of, uh, you know, things that can fluctuate with open strings in them and you can count them. A strong coupling, they gravitate and they become a nice uh, black hole who, who, you know, the story of black hole thermodynamics assigns an entropy. So, so, so this is how you get it. So, so, so this is 96, Strominger Waffa. Um, another very nice thing that you get by, by taking this as proportional to A of the horizon seriously, you, you, you get from this holography. Uh, 
so, so, so of course the fact that the entropy is not proportional to the volume but to the area, it looks like the degrees of freedom are on the surface. That's, that's holographic, but th there's more than that. It's also the fact that black holes are the most entropic objects in nature. So if you try to make anything in a finite volume have more entropy than the black hole, you end up collapsing. So, so, so these are the most entropic objects. And, 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 and so that sort of holography, uh, which, which basically means that um, uh, the, the, the classical description of, of gravity lives in more space-time dimensions than, than the quantum description does, right? Uh, it's, it's sort of a, a generic phenomenon in, in quantum gravity. And I mean, there's a very cute paper, I'm, probably you know it, by Toft in the 90s, Dimensional Reduction in Quantum Gravity. If people who haven't read it maybe want to read it, it's, it's really nice making, making this argument. I mean, it's a heuristic argument, but it's a nice one. Uh, so, so this has uh, led to the idea of holography and, 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 and of course this would be just hand waving if they weren't for, for string theory who came up with a really precise uh, you know, formulation of the ads safety correspondence and, and, and related stuff where you can actually test this super non-trivial idea that came from black hole thermodynamics. So, so this was 97. Uh, okay, but you might say, okay, this still, uh, I'm not even sure you guys were, were you born in these years? Yes, but very small, right? <laughs> okay, so, 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 so this is, uh, I mean, this is still uh, pretty old and we're supposed to do, I don't know, advanced lessons. Mm, sorry? So, so you, you are old? You, you are... You are older than this. Okay, that, that's good to know. So, like, uh, when, uh, uh, when I start talking to people born this century, then, then I start getting worried. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, another reason that, uh, that, that it was interesting to discuss all this black hole thermodynamics is that it served as sort of inspiration for uh, a lot of uh, recent developments, so this century, of, um, of a connection, uh, not between thermodynamics, but bec between quantum information theory and quantum gravity, which has been very interesting. And it actually gives a, a lot more relations than, uh, or uh, a, a lot of new interesting relations between, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the quantum theory and, 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 and this classical counterpart. Um, uh, and uh, so, so, so the point is to, to tell you a little bit about this and uh, if time permits, maybe we'll even get to uh, some sort of precise formulation. So, so within, so, so, so uh, we, Within this line of thinking, you can actually rerun Jacobson's argument, but in a much more precise setting, with similar assumptions, but, uh, but it's way more precise. In particular, you know what entropy you're talking about and, and really get these Einstein equations as, as an equation of state. Uh, okay, so, uh, so, so what's the difference between uh, this, this sort of two approaches? So, so you see, um, the entropy that, uh, that appears in black hole thermodynamics, well, it is, it is the sort of a, a coarse grained entropy. It is the thermodynamic entropy of the system. How do you know that? It's, it's, it's because it tends to increase under evolution. So, uh, um, so that's it. So, uh, so, so basically, it's uh, um, you're, 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 you're basically maximizing, so, 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 so you're looking at all the uh, possible microsto microscopic states of the system, let's say characterized by some density matrix rho, which are consistent with a set of macroscopic observables. I don't know, you fix the temperature, volume, la la la. Uh, and you're maximizing the, the trace rho log rho, which is the von Neumann entropy over all possible rows. So this is sort of the thermodynamic entropy, and this is coarse grained. And this is the thing that most likely corresponds to SBH, given that it obeys the second law. Um, so the entropy that, uh, that appears in all the uh, 
recent developments is instead of fine-grained entropy, which is called the entanglement entropy, And, uh, and this one is, uh, I mean, it's in certain sense similar to this. In other senses, it's, it's, it's different. Uh, in particular, this one is invariant under unitary time evolution. And, uh, but uh, similarly to, 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 to this entropy, it turns out that, uh, that in holography, uh, so, so we will be particularizing to the case of ADS-CFT because it's, uh, I mean, this is where the statements can be made more precise. It is believed that they're completely general, but if you want to say anything very concrete, um, it's a good idea to, to sit inside the ESCFT. So, so it turns out that even for, for, for this uh, fine-grained entropy, uh, you, you, you do have some nice geometrical objects in, uh, in the dual space-time. So, so the entropy is defined over here. And the, uh, the, the, the point is that there's some geometrical objects on the ADS side, areas of bulk surface and blah, 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 which, which correspond to it. So, so, so that's a little bit the idea. And, uh, and through these uh, this developments, you can sort of relate the, uh, the space-time geometry over here to the entanglement structure of the dual CFT, and, and also, as I said, so the, uh, the dynamics over here, the, the Einstein equations, to some consistency conditions on the entanglement structure. Okay, so, uh, so rather than uh, blind so much, let me, let me just uh, maybe define what this entanglement entropy is. Um, well, so, so as you well know, in quantum mechanics, the, uh, the state of a quantum system is represented by some state vector, psi, in the, in the Hilbert space. However, this is not the most general thing that you can do. So, so more generally, the system can be in a statistical ensemble of, of, uh, of uh, state vectors, and that statistical ensemble is characterized by a density matrix. Rho, which is sum over you know, some basis of states, pi. Where these pi's are positive and they sum to one. Uh, and, and basically, the, these guys tell you what is the uh, probability to, to find the system in, uh, in the state I. Okay, and rho is some Hermitian operator of unit trace, uh, and uh, it can be used to uh, compute the expectation values of, of uh, whatever operator you might have. The expectation value of rho is just trace of rho times rho. Now, uh, so, so one can t talk about pure states, where rho is just this, in some basis. Uh, if you're not powerful enough to, to, to find the basis in which it looks like this, so you can just check whether rho squared equal to rho. That's the condition for a pure state. But more generally, you're going to have mixed states where you cannot write it as such. Okay? And one way to distinguish between mixed states and pure states is to compute the von Neumann entropy. S, which is minus trace 
Prologro. So you can immediately see that if the state is pu pure, the von Neumann entropy is zero. If not, it's non-zero. Okay, zero for pure states. Okay, so now you want to uh, actually consider, uh, uh, so, so you, you take your system and you want to uh, split it into two parts, which I'm going to call A and uh, A complementary, A bar. And you're going to assume that the full Hilbert space factorizes into a piece associated to A and a piece associated to A bar. This sounds innocuous, but, uh, but it's not as simple uh, uh, in, in gauge theories, for example. Okay, and then you define the reduced density matrix. Ah, and, and, uh, and you're taking your, your total state to be rho. The reduced density matrix, rho A, is trace over A bar of rho. So you can just write rho in some basis where you, where you split the states in, in, in this tensor product fashion and you just uh, trace over the, uh, uh, the states that lay in A bar. And then uh, you define the entanglement entropy entropy of A as the von Neumann entropy associated to rho A, minus trace rho A log rho. Okay, and uh, uh, so, so uh, most of the time we're going to assume that the total state is pure. You don't need to, but, uh, but we're gonna assume it. And, and, and basically, then, then this entanglement entropy basically measures the, the failure of this total, so I'm gonna write this as psi psi, the total state psi to, to, to be written as the tensor product of a state in A and the state in A bar. Uh, Okay, I don't know how useful this is, so, so one can do an example with uh, spins. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so if you have two spins, so, so, so your Hilbert space consists of, you know, up, 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 down, a down, up, and down, down. So, so this is the tensor product of up, down, up, down. The spin one tensor, the same thing for the spin two. Okay, so, so I'm gonna take in this case the, the subsystem A to be the first spin and A bar to be the second spin. Okay, so now if I want to define the uh, entanglement entropy, um, okay, and now let me take the, uh, the total state uh, to be, for example, the, this, the, part, the following pure state, up, down, minus, down, up. Okay, then if I want to compute the entanglement entropy of subsystem A, which is just the, uh, sorry, not the entanglement, the, uh, let me first compute the, the, the density matrix, rho A. So this is trace over A bar, which is the second spin of psi, psi. Okay. 
So, uh, so since I'm doing a, a trace, the, the second egg has to be the same. So, so a, a priori in this I have four terms, but it's only in two of them that the second guy coincides, which is what I need for the trace. And then uh, you see that uh, if I'm taking, so I'm gonna get a half. So, so then I'm getting, if, if the first guy is up, uh, so then the second guy will be down and then on the uh, bra, uh, well, I, I'm gonna still have the, 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 the same guy the other way, point being that this is going to be looking like that. Plus, uh, down, down. Okay. Uh, so, so, so that's the density matrix. Uh, now if I want to compute the, the entropy, So, so the entropy is minus trace rho a log rho a. So uh, I'm I'm going to get minus. Uh, so I have uh, two contributions which are actually going to be equal to uh, times uh, a half log a half. Uh, which is also known as log two. Okay, and and the fact uh, so 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 actually uh, so so we see that the entanglement entropy is not zero, and you see very explicitly from here that uh, that uh, this, this state cannot be written as a product state of spin one and spin two. And uh, and actually this is uh, this is the uh, uh, maximum entanglement entropy that that you can have. In, in, uh, in this uh, subsystem. These are maximum entangled. Okay. Uh, you can also define something called the Rainy entropies. Uh, which are labeled by some integer n, one minus n uh, log I hope I got it right. Uh, uh, the, the advantage of these guys is that they're easier to compute than trace rho log rho. Uh, and so, so, uh, so if you know the Rainy entropies for all uh, positive integers n, you can get something that's called the entanglement spectrum, which are basically the, those PIs over there. Uh, and also, there's a nice thing. So, so as I said, these guys are easier to compute, and in particular, they can be used. The uh, the entanglement entropy can be computed by taking the limit as n goes to one of S and A. So, so of course, uh, these guys are a priori defined for for uh, n positive integer. Oftentimes you can analytically continue in n and then take the limit n to one and yeah, this is sort of the best way, one of the best ways to compute actually this, uh, this entanglement entropy. Uh, and these entanglement entropies have a, a lot of nice properties. So, so as I said, it's, uh, this, it's invariant under time evolution uh, that follows just because it's a trace. Um, it, it satisfies something called subadditivity. which uh, says that if you have uh, two disjoint subsystems, A and B, then, uh, then S of A plus S of B minus S A union B is greater or equal to zero. This quantity is known, is denoted as I of A and B and is known as the mutual information. Uh, right. 
And, and, and basically, this, uh, this mutual information uh, gives you an upper bound on the correlations between this, these two systems. So, so you can actually uh, write it in terms of, uh, you know, some expectation values, so joint expectation values between operators defined in the two systems. And when the, 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 the mutual information is zero, then, uh, then, then the, the connected part of these correlators has, has to vanish. So, so it's a useful object. Uh, there's something called Araki Lib, which is sort of similar to this, but different, which tells you that S of A U B greater or equal than modulus of S of A minus S of B. And this has the interesting consequence uh, that uh, if your total state is pure, then uh, the entanglement entropy of the union is, if the total state of, yeah, so, so let me take uh, B to be the complement of A, and let me take the total state to be pure. So this is the entropy of some system that's in a pure state. Therefore, it is zero, very good. Uh, so, so basically tells you that S of A has to be equal to S of A bar. Okay? So, so if you have two, two complementary subsystems, their entanglement entropy with each other, uh, the, uh, it can be non-zero, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but the entanglement entropy of, 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 of the total state, if it's pure, it has to be zero. So, so this basically tells you that this entanglement entropy is, is really not an additive quantity. It's not that I have some entanglement here and some entanglement there, and then I, it's, 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 it's really something, so you, you should think of it is that if the two subsystems are entangled, well, you, you put them together, you're, 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 you're no longer entangled with, okay, you, can, you can cancel the entanglement with the, with the rest, no, you're not canceling. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say imprecise things. Okay, and then uh, there's another nice property. Uh, that this guy has, which is called strong subadditivity. Uh, which is the statement have three disjoint subsystems. Then S of A union B plus S of B union C greater or equal than S of B plus S of A union B Union C. Okay, you, you, you can rewrite this in terms of mutual information. It tells you that the mutual information of A with B union C is larger than the uh, mutual information between A and just B. Uh, I guess that makes sense. And uh, what's, what's nice about uh, this formula is that uh, it's, uh, it's used in the modern rephrasing of the information paradox. So, so it, uh, it was used by uh, first by Matur in 2009, and then Amps in Amps, Almeiri, Marolf, Polczynski, and Sally in 2012 to, to, to rephrase the information paradox. Uh, yeah, maybe I should ask you guys, uh, can somebody tell me what the information paradox is? Black hole information paradox. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just a random try. The, whichever, whichever phrasing you want, or you know. You guys have heard of the information paradox. Yes, yes good. <laughs> Nobody wants to give it a try? Because? Uh, 
so, 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 uh, so, okay, there's this Hawking evaporation, and what's the nature of the Hawking quanta? So, 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 so part of the Hawking calculation was, 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 was the fact that, uh, okay, black hole evaporates and, and the radiation uh, is thermal, right? And, and thermal is a state that, that seems to carry no information about what, what, whatever was in. So, uh, so oftentimes uh, it is said, uh, I, I guess heuristically, it is said that uh, uh, the, the information paradox is, is basically that uh, if you start with some uh, matter in some pure state, you collapse it, the, the thing becomes a black hole, then it evaporates, the Hawking radiation is in this uh, thermal state, and therefore you, you cannot uh, e evolve unitarily pure states to big states, and that's the paradox. So, uh, so I wanted to emphasize that actually not a paradox, the, the reason being that, uh, you know, if, if, if you're just trying to take a, a piece of coal, which is in some pure state, and, and then you burn it, and then you measure the, you know, the, the radiation that comes out of the burning piece of coal, it's going to look thermal to uh, an incredibly uh, high precision. So, so if you have a general complicated pure states, they're very, very close to looking like thermal states. So unless you do an, uh, a hugely precise calculation, it's very hard to tell a pure state from a mixed state. So, so the, the precise statement is that, um, that uh, if you compute, uh, so, so expectation values that, uh, that you, of uh, you know, your, 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 your favorite variables, that, you, that you're computing them in a pure state, in a typical pure state, they're, uh, uh, they're exponentially in the entropy close to the microcanonical expectation values, which is a mixed state, okay? So unless you can do measurements that are exponentially precise in the entropy, and in the, in the case of gravity, of course, the, 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 uh, the entropy is one over G Newton, it's, it's basically going to infinity, in, uh, in, in the classical gravity limit, you cannot tell a pure state from a, uh, from, from a mixed state. And therefore, the fact that, that uh, you know, Hawking's radiation looks thermal, given that uh, you know, he, he only computes things to maybe first order, second order in perturbation theory, not non perturbatively precisely, this, this thing uh, is it's probably impossible to do such a calculation in gravity. So, 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 so you, you, you don't really have a paradox just because the, the Hawking radiation looks thermal, okay? And, and that's actually the expected behavior of any quantum system that's in a pure state that's, that's complicated enough. So, so, so that's the expectation. However, what is a paradox is, is what these guys were, were discussing in the context of this uh, entanglement entropy. So, so, so suppose uh, that you have some evaporating black hole Um, so, so, so basically the argument uh, that, that goes in here is the following. So, so suppose you have some, uh, um, some black hole and you want to, okay, what am I doing? I, I want to have this, A, B, C. So, uh, so, so you're considering the process of Hawking evaporation around some old black hole. So an, uh, an old, so, if, if the black hole is, uh, is described by some, uh, you know, ordinary quantum system and the total state is pure, and, uh, and then uh, you're, uh, so, so you're looking at basically the, the entangled entropy of Hawking radiation as it arrives at infinity, uh, Page has argued a long time ago that that entangled entropy should do something like that. It's called the page curve, and it's in analogy with what happens when you have two subsystems here and the total system is in a pure state. So as you move the partition between the two subsystems, the, the entanglement entropy grows, between them grows. Uh, it's, it's maximized when they're both sort of equal size, and then it, it goes back down. Okay. 
So, 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 so there's supposed to be this, uh, this analogy. So if you're assuming that, that the black hole evaporation is uh, described by some unitary process, then uh, it should be that the entanglement entropy of, uh, of Hawking radiation starts decreasing after something called the page time, uh, which is roughly the time by which uh, the, the black hole uh, is, is half of its original size, something like that. Okay, so, so, so basically what they did, they, they, they considered the, 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 Hawk, the process of Hawking evaporation a uh, uh, around some old black hole, old meaning that it's, it's on this decreasing part of, uh, assumed the decreasing part of the page curve. Okay, and they consider some uh, subsystems uh, which were, uh, so A was the early radiation Uh, B was a Hawking quantum just outside the horizon, and C was a Hawking quantum just inside the horizon. Okay, so Hawking quantum uh, outside, and this guy is inside. So, 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 um, and, um, uh, and, and what they noticed is, is, uh, is, is the following. So, uh, um, so, so this Hawking per creation, it's, 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 it's basically uh, this B and C quanta are actually created in an entangled state. So, so the total state of, of B and C is pure, okay? So the entanglement entropy of this piece is actually zero. Um, and therefore, this, this piece also sort of drops out because these guys are just entangled with each other. You're left with S of A. And, and then, uh, this object over here, so, so this is the, the uh, entanglement of the early radiation, including the B quantum, and this guy would become without the B quantum. And uh, the assumption is that this guy is smaller than this guy because you're on the descending part of the page curve, right? Uh, so, so you're seeing that, so this guy is zero, zero is greater or equal than S of B plus S of A minus S of A union B. But, but because we're on the descending part, this, this, uh, this, uh, this guy is decreasing, so, uh, 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 so, so this is positive. <coughs> this guy is positive. This is just some, uh, I mean, this, this guy is non-trivially entangled. So, so it's entanglement entropy is positive. So you're getting a contradiction. A and this is actually a sharp contradiction. Because B and C, I mean, they're, they're, they're basically a state like this, if you wish. They're just entangled with each other and they just drop out of the... Because they're maximally entangled with each other, they're in a pure state. And being in a pure state, the entanglement entropy is zero. Yes, because they basically drop out but uh, from, from the correlation of, of, of this full subsystem with the rest, because they're just entangled with each other. Th this is measuring the, uh, uh, the, the, the correlation between this full subsystem and what you might have. These guys are just entangled with each other within the system, so, so they just drop out. Uh, I, I mean, that, that's, that's basically the idea. I, I well, what, what, what I'm saying, if you have if you have this state and the spins are in different subsystems, then they do contribute to the entanglement entropy between A and A bar. If this entangled state is between spins, so, so let's say that system one is not just one spin but ten and I'm taking two spins which are in this entangled state, but just in A, 
these guys don't contribute to the entanglement and entropy between A and A bar. They're just entangled with, uh, with each other within A. So, so this is basically the reason that this term drops out over here. Yeah, you, you, maybe it's uh, useful to just picture this as you're having things that are in entangled states, but they, they, they belong to different parts of the subsystem, so they only contribute if, if, if they're in different subsystems. Sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the disjointment is, 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 is very important. Yeah, so I, I mean, there, there's also some sort of monogamy property. So if these guys are maximally entangled with each other, they cannot be entangled with anything else, which also helps show that, uh, that, uh, that they just drop out of here. Yeah, the, the, this thing is just S of A. Okay. So, uh, so, so, so this is sort of, let's, let me call it the modern rephrasing of, of, of the information paradox, and, and it's, it's, it's really a paradox. So, so, you know, you get zero greater than something that's, uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, okay, there are different proposed uh, resolutions. Uh, some people say that the horizon doesn't exist, and therefore you don't have this, I mean, uh, the existence of BNC quanta assume that the horizon is smooth and you, you can do this local Rindler business and so on and you get this entangled pair. So some people talk about firewalls or fuzzballs and then they, they just get rid of this. Um, another possibly more interesting possibility, which I guess Agnese was, uh, was hinting at, was actually that the three subsystems are not disjoint. So, so this inequality only holds for disjoint subsystems. But for example, if the black hole interior is encoded in the exterior, in A, then you cannot apply the inequality anymore and, and you don't get the contradiction. And, uh, okay, I, I, I thought that was a simple question. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, but, uh, but uh, yeah, so, um, so, so just to say this, this sort of uh, entanglement business, it's, it's, uh, it's been very fruitful in sort of rephrasing the discussion, all sorts of discussions that appear in the context of ADS-CFT, quantum gravity, in this language, and it's, it's, a, it's a very nice language to use and to, uh, to make things more precise. Um, okay, I'm, I'm still not done over here. Uh, so still uh, under properties. Um, so, so for any reduced density matrix rho A, one can define formally something called the modular Hamiltonian. Uh, I mean, th this is a definition. Uh, usually, uh, this is not a local operator, it's just some horrible, for, 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 for generic density matrices, this is just some horrible crap. However, there exist uh, some, some nice exceptions for, for special states and special subregions and, and, and where, where, where there's a local expression for this HA, which is, uh, which is very useful. Uh, and, uh, and then using this HA, then one, one, one can show that uh, the entanglement entropy satisfies something that looks like a first law. So delta S A is minus delta trace rho A log rho A, so which is minus trace delta rho A log rho A. There's another term where the delta acts on the log, and you're getting something like rho minus one delta rho, but trace of, so that's just trace of delta rho, but that's zero because both the initial and the deformed density matrix have trace equal to one, okay? So trace of delta rho is just zero, okay? And this thing now, 
so, so this is minus HA by definition. So, so you're seeing you're, 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 you're basically getting the, the, the difference in expectation values of this modular Hamiltonian in between the two states. So this is delta of expectation value of HA in the two slightly different states. Uh, finally, another nice quantity to, to introduce is called the relative entropy. So it's defined as S of rho double bar sigma, which is minus trace of rho log sigma. So I have two density matrices, rho and sigma. Um, and uh, minus S of rho. So this is trace of rho log rho minus log sigma. And, and this is positive. So, so it's nice because it has some nice properties like positivity, it has some inclusion property. Uh, then you, ca you can also write, so, so you see that you, you, you can just add and subtract the trace sigma log sigma. So minus trace rho log sigma plus S of sigma, which is just minus that, so, so they cancel, minus S of rho. Now uh, log of sigma is minus uh, H, the modular Hamiltonian associated to sigma. Okay, so, so what you see is that this thing becomes Delta expectation value of H sigma. Delta means uh, expectation value in the state rho uh, minus expectation value in the state sigma uh, minus delta S. Again, delta means uh, expectation value in state rho minus expectation value in state sigma. This is positive uh, because, uh, as I said, the, the, the relative uh, entropy is, uh, is positive. Uh, oh, yeah, I, 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 I forgot to say what the, this thing is, is useful for. So, so, so b because it's positive, so, so basically this is a measure of distinguishability between rho and sigma. So, so if, uh, if the relative entropy is zero, then the states are the same. And if not, they're not the same. And the bigger it is, the more different they are. I mean, Yeah, so it's a rho, rho minus one, delta rho with a trace. Yeah, so, so that I said, so, so first of all, these guys cancel. Yeah. And trace of delta rho is trace of like rho prime minus trace of rho. But both traces are one because this, these density matrices are, are normalized. So that cancels. Okay, so, so, so you get something like this. And, uh, and actually, so, so, so remember uh, yesterday, I, I talked about this uh, generalized second law and all of Bekenstein lowering things into the black hole horizon and finding uh, funny thing. So, so, so what he was finding is that in order for the GSL to not be violated, he needed that the entropy of the box of matter that he was lowering had to be smaller or equal uh, than uh, two pi over h bar or something like that of energy times its size. Uh, but the problem with this is that it was very imprecise and uh, blah blah blah. Uh, this thing is the precise version of this Bekerstein bound. So it was done by Cassini in 08. So, so, so basically you're, you're, you're looking at, uh, at states uh, that are defined on the half space and, and, and then this is sort of the precise version of that. Okay, that's, that's just a comment, I mean. 
Okay, good. So, so now I'm almost done with the... Uh, am I almost done? So, so, so I hope from the, 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 the little example that I gave, it's, it's kind of clear how to uh, compute this entanglement entropy in, in quantum mechanics. You, 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 you're, you're just doing this, this little calculation. However, one is very interested in computing entanglement entropy in QFT. So, so it's defined the same way. Uh, you oftentimes, so, so you want to, um, you oftentimes want this uh, sub-Hilbert spaces to be the Hilbert spaces associated to some sp spatial subregion. So you're on a constant time slice and you want to take some spatial subregion. You, you don't have to, but, but that's what's usually considered. Um, so let's talk about entanglement. Entropy. In QFT. Um, okay, so, so here is your QFT, say at t equal to zero, you're taking some subregion A, which has some shape, so it's a spatial subregion, uh, and uh, say you want to compute the uh, uh, entanglement entropy. Uh, so, so for that, you, you need some way of characterizing the state of the quantum field. Um, and uh, you can think um, okay, so, so in quantum mechanics, when you have a particle, you, you can characterize it by its, say, position, x. And then you have these wave functions, uh, psi of x, which are the state of your system, psi, into the x eigenvectors. So that's the wave function. Now in quantum field theory, what you want, you want to replace this by your field configuration, function of x. Okay? So you're going to have some wave functional which depends on your field configurations. So, so let me call this x and zero. So, 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 so this wave functional is most on time slice, say t equal to zero, which is morally speaking phi of x into the state of your system. Okay? And now the, the point is, is that, uh, that this wave functional can actually be computed using a path integral. Uh, so, so, so if, you're, uh, if your state is the vacuum, then uh, this, uh, this is basically a, a path integral over all the field configurations. Uh, so, so let's not have the region A yet. So, so this is just some path integral over all the uh, field uh, configurations with some prescribed boundary conditions at t equal to zero. Okay, e to the minus s. If you're not in the vacuum, then you might put some insertions and blah, blah, but let's assume that you're in the vacuum. Uh, so that's what it is. Uh, now, uh, if you want to compute, uh, so now uh, if you're interested, uh, so, so now let's say that you're taking some subregion A on, uh, on, on this slice, and you're interested in computing the density matrix uh, associated to, uh, to the state that just lives on A. So, so basically you're, you're supposed to take, you know, this psi psi, and then trace over the complementary region. And then uh, uh, in terms of path integrals, what, you, what you're ending up uh, doing, so, 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 so you're taking, um, uh, how should I write this? So, so your row A. So now your row A is going to take two sets of boundary conditions. Uh, uh, well, because it has both a bra and a cat, roughly speaking. So basically what you're doing, you're, you're introducing some, some cut at this surface, and you're putting some boundary conditions for your fields 
on the lower part of the cut, say uh, phi 1 of x, and some other boundary condition phi 2 of x. So this A is going to uh, gonna depend on both sets of boundary conditions. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm not being super clear. L l let me draw A like this, maybe it's clearer. So, so this is my region A. So, so this is on, on the constant time slice. This is a cut, so I want to put boundary conditions phi one of x and zero on the lower part and phi two of x and zero on, on, on the upper part. And then I want to basically pass integrate over anything that's happening in these regions because I'm doing the trace over the complementary region. Okay, so, so, so basically rho A in quantum field theory is given by this uh, path integral prescription. And then, um, uh, as I said, uh, uh, a useful way to, uh, to, to compute the um, entanglement entropy is, uh, is to first compute the Rainy entropies and, and then do this, this thing called the replica trick where you analytically continue in N. So then uh, if you want to compute, for example, rho squared, then what you're doing, so, so you're having sort of two copies of the region. So you're just uh, integrating over this, uh, this part, there's no problem, and here you're identifying the boundary conditions on the upper part of this cut to the boundary conditions on the lower part of this cut. If you want to compute trace of rho squared, then you're also identifying these two guys because it's a trace. And then the same for uh, rho to the n, so, so this is how you compute the Rennies. After you compute the Rennies, you, you take the n equal to one limit and, and, you, and you're getting the, the entanglement entropy. Um, I mean, th these are not easy calculations, but in certain cases it, it can be done. So for example, you can get uh, the fact that the entanglement entropy of uh, an interval in a two-dimensional CFT so you have some interval of length L. This is a universal formula, a central charge over three log of L over epsilon. So epsilon is some UV cutoff. It, it always enters in this, uh, these calculations because you're doing quantum field theory and there's a lot of entanglement between you know, fluctuating quantum fields on, on, on the two sides of the cut. So, so this entanglement entropy is always divergent. It's general divergent structure in, in any dimensions goes like the area of the boundary of the surface A divided by epsilon to the D minus two, with some numbers. Um, uh, and in two dimensions, okay, so you actually get a logarithmic divergence. Okay, and, and, and this is a nice universal result. Uh, the coefficient is, is, is fixed. Okay, very good. So, uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have time to go into this, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, so, so, so this is how you approach this calculation in QFT. Um, the last thing that I want to say is something about these uh, modular Hamiltonians in, in special situations, because we're actually going to need it. Ah, sorry, uh, this is the entanglement entropy of an interval of length L in a two-dimensional CFT. So I'm in two dimensions, so I have one spatial di direction, so I'm just on a line, and I'm picking a sem segment of length L on that line. Okay. So, uh, so I want to talk about modular Hamiltonians in spatial situations. Uh, so I remind you that these guys are defined by the reduced density matrix is e to the minus h. Okay, so, so, so generally it's something non-local, but one notable exception to this is when you, your theory is a local QFT, the total state uh, 
is, is the vacuum, sorry, uh, I guess local Lorentz invariant QFT. The total state is, is the Minkowski vacuum. And your region A is the half space. So, so I'm at t equal to zero, so x uh, belongs to r d minus one, and x one is bigger than zero. Okay? So, so, so it's basically this. This is time. This is x one. These are all the x's, which I don't care about, uh, x perpendicular. And I'm, I'm, my, my region A is the infinite half line. Then the claim is that this, uh, this modular Hamiltonian HA is 2 pi integral over d, d minus 1 x, x1, t0, 0 of uh, 0 and, uh, and this thing is known as the Rindler Hamiltonian, which I'm sure you know. So, uh, so, so what is happening here? Uh, basically what's happening, okay, so, so if I have some uh, sort of Lorentzian observer, so there's a natural set of Lorentzian observers that, that only see the half line, and those are the Rindler observers that, that we already discussed. So, okay, let me forget about the perpendicular directions, but they are there. So, so if I'm considering Rindler space, which only covers this, this, this wedge of Minkowski. So, so they're, they're naturally restricted to just seeing this region A that I defined. Um, and then uh, if I want to compute, so, uh, so now if I want to compute the reduced density matrix of A when my total state is the vacuum, uh, for this uh, field theory, then uh, what I should do according to this prescription, I should first weak rotate to become, um, well, uh, to, to, to Euclidean space. Okay, so, so my, maybe I should have said that. Uh, so, so as you remember, these Ringler observers, they have some uh, time-like killing vector, dt, the matrix is ds squared is minus r squared dt squared plus r squared plus the perpendicular directions. Uh, okay, and uh, this was the boost generator in the full Minkowski, but it's, it's, it's just dt for, for these guys. And now, if I want to compute my, my reduced density matrix for A in the uh, full Minkowski vacuum, then I should just weak rotate this thing. And you see, when I, uh, uh, when I uh, weak rotate T, what I'm getting, I'm, I'm just getting a uh, two-dimensional flat space here in, in polar coordinates. And, uh, and this dt just becomes uh, a rotation around the origin, right? I mean, it's obvious? Is it obvious? Oh, okay, good. Is it obvious to everybody? Yeah, okay, good. So, 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 so this just becomes a rotation. Maybe I should write it bigger. So, so now I'm in Euclidean. Te, well, no, this is not good. Uh, <laughs> this is te, right? It's the angle, and uh, well, R is doing whatever. Uh, so yeah, so so now what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to put uh, boundary conditions. On, uh, on, on the upper part of this cut. So I'm making a cut at A, I'm putting some boundary conditions on the upper part, some boundary condition on, on the lower part, and I'm supposed to compute uh, this, uh, this uh, path integral. But then you see something very nice is happening. It's, uh, it's, it's basically the fact that I can think of the evolution from the upper part of the cut to the lower one as some sort of uh, Hamiltonian evolution with respect to this sort of circular Euclidean time. Right? I, I'm just so, so if I'm, if my constant time slices are this, then you see the, the evolution that takes me from here to the other side of the cuts is, is, is just evolution with respect to this guy. 
Uh, and therefore, uh, row A is simply, uh, well, it's, uh, it's uh, e to the minus beta times the Hamiltonian associated to this TE, this, uh, this sort of polar angle evolution, where beta is, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just the, the temperature associated to, to, to Rindler space, which is just the uh, beta is just 2 pi times the extrinsic curvature of the horizon anyways. It's, 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 it's basically the periodicity of the Euclidean time circle, which is just 2 pi, okay? And, and, uh, and now this, uh, the, 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 the generator of, uh, of this motion, well, uh, I can just evaluate it on the, uh, it's, it's conserved, so I can just evaluate it on the initial time slice, and there I'm just picking up something like T mu nu, uh, uh, the, the normal to the initial time slice into the killing vector, right? This guy is, is okay, and now I'm, uh, I'm a weak rotating back to Lorentzian. This is just gonna be T, and then uh, this C, uh, where I have to be really careful because, sorry, sorry, this is not T, this is X zero, yeah. So, 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 so let me, I, I'm not being super careful. This, uh, this T is the Rindler time, but of course I also have the, the usual Minkowski coordinates, so minus DX zero squared plus DX one squared plus all the other guys, okay? So, so, so the normal to the constant X zero slice is, well, N with an upper index zero, this is zero, and then you want to look at the scaling vector on the uh, x0 equal to zero slice, but we already did that exercise, so dt is, you know, dx0 by dt uh, times d0 plus dx1 by dt d1. And uh, if you remember, so, so this was, um, I think it was, uh, well, now I have to remember. Uh, basically, it, it will have to be x1 over here, right? Yeah, uh, because x0 and x1 were sinh and cosh of t, if you remember from yesterday. So when I take the derivative, I'm just switching them. So this guy is gonna be x1, proportional to x1, and this guy is gonna be proportional to x0. x0 is zero on this slice, so I drop this, and I'm just left with x1 that is zero, which is basically this thing over here. Okay? So, so, so the way that you get it by, is you, you, you can actually compute this in the vacuum, you can actually compute this path integral exactly, uh, but, but, but this is what it has to give you just by the symmetries of, of the problem. Um, another instance, where you know what this uh, uh, modular Hamiltonian is uh, exactly, is when you have a conformal field theory, the total state is the vacuum, uh, and A is a ball so again, I'm on the constant t equal to zero slice. So this is just spatial. So this is basically a ball of radius r center at x zero. Okay, so, so this is my t equal to zero slice. I'm drawing a ball of radius r center at this x zero. And this is my region A. And then uh, the claim is that the, uh, uh, yeah, so, so, so rho b, so uh, the reduced density matrix 
associated to this ball is again trace over uh, everything outside over the complement of the ball of the you know CFT excitate, uh, I mean, CFT fields in in the vacuum. And then from here, you, you, you can find that this is e to the minus hb, where this hb is, again, a very nice expression. It's curly bit. 2 pi integral over the ball So, um, this, uh, this, this just follows uh, actually uh, from the ability to do some conformal mapping. So, in the case of the CFT, where, where you have general conformal transformations as, as part of your symmetry group, you, you can actually conformally map this situation to this situation. And, uh, and you know the the, the the states transform in a in a prescribed way with the, with the unitary transformations and, and all that and, and basically this H is the transform of this H under that conformal map. And uh, there's one th uh, nice thing. So 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 here. So in the in the Lorentzian picture, the H was was basically generating this. Uh, these, uh, you know, geometrical flows associated to boosts. So, 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 so this, uh, this, this boost in the, in the Rinla region. Uh, here you, you can also think of this. So, so you can also think, so you, you, you consider something called the causal development of the ball. So, 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 so basically uh, all, all the points that, uh, you know, are, are causally connected to the ball via pass directed uh, causal curves. And similarly here, and you actually do have some vector field whose lines look like this, which is basically the map of this guy to the case of the ball. Okay? So 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 this modular Hamiltonian over here generates the flow along this this uh, this vector field line. Okay, good. So uh, now I'm done with entanglement uh, entropy basics. Uh, so uh, what I finally come to is to discuss entanglement in the context of holography. And let's see what the 10 minutes are, are enough for doing that. Okay, so, so for holography, we'll just work with ADS CFT because that's, uh, uh, that's the simplest, but, uh, but as I said, this, this is supposed to be way more general uh, than that. Uh, so ADS CFT uh, states that the partition function of, uh, of gravity in ADS with Dirichlet boundary conditions uh, on the fields or for most of the fields uh, equals the, the, the CFT uh, partition function. Uh, with prescribed sources for, for the operators. And this correspondence is, is sort of best studied in a limit. Okay, so, so you can do it for n equal to four uh, super young meals with SUN gauge group. So, so you're studying in a limit where n or the central charge of the CFT is going to infinity. This is a limit where on, on the gravity side you're, you're, you're suppressing quantum gravitational corrections. And you're also studying in a limit where it's a strong coupling, strong toothed coupling in, in the n equal to four case, um, which in the gravity side means that instead of dealing with full string theory, you're just dealing with supergravity. So, so, so basically what happens in the strong coupling limit is, is, uh, is uh, uh, that the, there's, a, there's a mass gap that develops between the higher spin states 
spin greater than two states, which would be corresponding to uh, to, spin, uh, to, to strings, uh, and and uh, and the spin to sector, which is just supergravity. So, so sort, of, sort of this is the regime uh, where uh, this ADS-CFT is most studied. Um, so, so this is uh, some sort of a classical limit. Uh, in, in the sense that uh, um, correlation functions of uh, you know, operators that are single traces in this um, uh, in SUN sort of factorize, so, so things become free in, in, in this limit. Um, and uh, okay, so, so there's some correspondence between some sort of classical or semi-classical looking states in the CFT plus, plus the vacuum, which is sort of a special state, and some sort of nice smooth geometry on the ADS side that's described by supergravity. And, uh, okay, so, so, so you have some map between different asymptotically ADS geometries, so, so that's part of the correspondence, and CFT states. Uh, so, for example, if you have Poincaré ADS, there's just the CFT vacuum on the plane. If you have a global ADS, there's the CFT vacuum on the cylinder. Uh, if you're having a black hole, this is a thermal state. Or maybe it's a very highly excited pure state, you can't really tell. Um, Okay, good. So, 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 so that's uh, the setup, and uh, one should note that so, so in most in the instances of ADS-CFT, with some uh, few examples in very low dimensions, where uh, you 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 might have a non-perturbative definition of quantum gravity. So, so in, in very special and kind of boring examples, you might have it. So you can compute the non-perturbative partition function and so on. Most of the time, we we don't know how to uh, get out of this regime. Maybe we can get out of this regime, but, uh, but this regime is sort of very difficult to study. So more often than not, the CFT is used as a definition of what you mean by quantum gravity in ADS. Okay? So, so sort of, uh, uh, we, we normally think of the CFT as being sort of fundamental, uh, j just because we don't have, we don't know how to deal with non perturbatively with, with string theory and so on. So, so you're using the CFT as the fundamental, and the bulk, you think of it as emergent. So, so, so then you can ask all sorts of uh, general questions about how does generically uh, uh, a bulk geometry, maybe in this limit, how can you see that it emerges from the CFT, and things like that. So, so these are the kind of questions that, that people are, are looking at. And uh, it was uh, realized uh, that, uh, that actually there's a very nice connection between the entanglement structure of the CFT and the connectedness of, of the bulk, of the dual bulk geometry. And sort of the, uh, the poster child of this, uh, this connection is the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the two-sided black hole in ADS. Sorry, the, uh, the eternal black hole in ADS. And uh, this black hole is supposed to be holographically dual. So, so okay, so, um, all right. So, uh, so as you see, this, uh, this black hole has two boundaries. As such, it should correspond to, uh, it's holographically dual to two CFTs. These boundaries are, are causally disconnected from each other, as you can see from the diagram. You cannot send signals from one to the other, so, so these CFTs are sort of independent. Uh, however, they're supposed to be in an entangled state, which is something known as, so, so, so sorry, so what do I want to say? Uh, so, so this is holographically dual to two non-interacting uh, CFTs in some entangled state, which is the so-called thermophile double state, 
which is 1 over z, sum over all the um, uh, energy eigenstates of, uh, of the CFT, e to the minus beta e uh, over 2 e e. Okay. So this is the state in CFT1. This is the state in, or maybe I should call them E left, E right. Okay, then it's clear. Okay? So, so basically this is a superposition of um, tensor products of, uh, of energy eigenstates. In a, so, so, so these are two identical copies of the same CFT. They have the same eigenstates. And then uh, the, the claim is that this geometry is dual to this uh, highly entangled state in the Hilbert space, in the tensor uh, product of the Hilbert spaces of the two CFTs. And uh, I mean, you can easily see that if you tra take the trace over one side, you just get a, an exactly thermal density matrix on the other side. So, so this is how you see the black hole. So from each, each of these guys, you see the black hole, and that's, that's the black hole, and so on. And uh, well, this, uh, this, uh, this picture is interesting because normally if I give you two non-interacting CFTs, you know, you're going to draw one over here with its emergent space-time and another one over there with its emergent space-time and they have nothing to do with each other. And the claim is that once you put them in some particular entangled states, then uh, these guys, okay, you still cannot communicate, but you're sharing an interior. So what you can do at the price of your life, you, you and your friend can both jump into the black hole and you meet in the interior and then you live happily for very short. And, and that's, uh, that's supposed to be a consequence of entanglement and, uh, and, it, and it's very strange. So, so what's strange about this? You, you could be interpreting this sum, which is what the CFT is telling you, as just some superposition of disconnected space-time geometry. Each of the energy eigenstates is dual to some geometry like this. And then you're doing the superposition and opla, you, you end up with a connected space-time. That's a hugely nonlinear behavior of the connectedness of space-time, so, so, so it looks very funny. Uh, since I'm out of time, I, I, I won't derive this for you, but uh, there's a nice paper by Maldacena on the eternal black hole of a, in ADS where, where he does this. Um, and uh, very good. So, okay, so there's supposed to be this, uh, uh, this connection between uh, uh, connectedness of the space-time geometry and entanglement. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe I should say, uh, I mean, sometimes people say that uh, uh, whenever you have entanglement, you have, so, so this is, of course, the, a wormhole, right? It, 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 it connects the, the, the two sides. Uh, a an, non-traversable an wormhole. Uh, people oftentimes say that whenever you have entanglement, you should have some sort of wormhole, quantum wormhole, wh wh whatever that might mean. Um, I should maybe point out that there's some, I think, interesting uh, recent work by um, Jafferis and Schneider, where, where, where they studied this sort of relation in some sort of string theory setup, where they have some parameter, and they show that uh, at some sort of strong coupling in terms of this, this parameter. Uh, so, so, so they have a bulk-bulk duality. In some region of this parameter, what you get is this picture. In some other region of that parameter, you basically get this picture, a sum over disconnected geometries with entangled states on top of each other, which suggests that uh, it's, it's not just entanglement that is going to tell you that you're going to have a connected space-time. Maybe you should also have something like strong coupling, something that should tell you that you expect a smooth space-time. So, okay. I, I, I thought that paper was sort of clarifying in that discussion that, uh, you know, like, what, what does it mean whenever you have entanglement, you have geometry, but you don't necessarily have a, a notion of geometry that, that addresses it. Okay, very good. Oh, my God. Can, can I take a five, ten? I know. Okay. So, uh, okay, so, so this being said, uh, so, so the uh, sort of the breakthrough in the field has been this uh, uh, Rutakanagi proposal. So, so the proposal is that when you have in, uh, a CFT, 
So, so, so let me look at the CFT. So, so this is the t equal to zero slice in, uh, in the CFT, and I'm looking at some region A. So, so their proposal is that the entanglement entropy of, of A is given by the area of the minimum uh, bulk surface. Uh, so, so, so this is the, the, the bulk radial direction in, uh, in ADS. So this is the area of the minimum bulk surface that, uh, that ends like this on the boundary of A. A uh, bulk over 4G Newton. So of course this should ring a bell of everything that we've been talking about uh, areas and black hole thermodynamics, but, but now this is the entanglement entropy, so it's, it's the fine-grained entropy in the CFT. And uh, uh, as I said, this, this entanglement entropy is divergent, but so is the area. This guy is UV divergent, this guy is IR divergent from the infinite volume of, uh, of uh, ADS, and uh, that, uh, that works out very nicely. Uh, and, uh, and this formula basically shows you that the, in, in, in CFTs with a holographic dual, uh, a smooth space time that's holographically dual to them, uh, you, you must have a, an extremely special structure of entanglement such that for any region A, uh, well, the, the entanglement entropy should be given by, by, by a formula like this. So, so this is a very non-trivial constraint uh, and, and, and beautifully geometric constraint on the entanglement structure of these sort of holographic CFTs. Uh, I should also say that uh, when you don't have Einstein gravity in the bulk, this is replaced by some sort of Wald functional. So when you have higher derivative terms and so on. And also interestingly, so, so this is the leading term. So, so here G Newton is one over N squared in terms of N uh, young means. So you can also have order one corrections. The order one corrections, okay, so, so maybe re let me redraw this as such. So now uh, here is time, here is my surface A, and this is how it's going into the bulk. I, I just collapsed it. Uh, the order one correction basically comes from the entropy of bulk quantum fields in this like tongue-shaped region. And it's basically the, yeah, it's the one over n correction to, to, to this leading term. And uh, so, so, so there have been some proposals that instead of just minimizing the area, you should be minimizing uh, the sum of this uh, area term plus, plus entropy of the quantum fields. Uh, which, which has led to the recent progress in, uh, in this page curve business for uh, islands and so on. Uh, the only comment I want to make is that, whereas in this case it's very clear what they mean, because you're anchored on the boundary, so you're really computing a, an entanglement entropy in the CFT. In, in that case, uh, the surface is not anchored on the boundary, so I, I don't really know what it means, except when they do it in ADS, but, but, but that's just a comment. Okay, so in the last minute, uh, let me tell you how the Einstein equations are derived from uh, entanglement uh, in this case. So, 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 okay. so, so I'm basically doing a, a rerun of, you, you can do a rerun of Jacobson's argument in, in this case. So, uh, and basically what you're using is, is the, that nice uh, CFT formula on the modular Hamiltonian for a ball in, in the CFT. So, so your setup, is that you're, you're taking some holographic CFT, so it's dual to some nice smooth bulk space time. Uh, you're looking at states that are around the CFT vacuum. So you have the vacuum, and then you have some delta rho, which is very close to the uh, vacuum, which is supposed to uh, be represented by a small metric perturbation around Poincaré ADS. Okay? Um, and then, uh, you are assuming, uh, you're assuming that the uh, entanglement entropy of this ball is given by a wall type functional. Well, you, you can either assume that, uh, so, so, so importantly, this H is not assumed to be on shell. It's just some arbitrary metric that you, you put on ADS, that, that, that li lives on ADS. Uh, but you are assuming that the entanglement entropy of, of a ball uh, B in the CFT is given by, you know, the area of the bulk surface that's anchored like this. 
that you're assuming, or if not, you're assuming that is given, you, you can also assume that is given by a Walt type formula that, that, that also works. Okay, so, so this is an assumption, and with that assumption, uh, basically wh what you're gonna do, you, uh, as I said, the, the first law entanglement has to hold by definition, so you have delta SB equals delta modular Hamiltonian for the ball, which is given by that. Okay, and and now, uh, well, uh, and now you're using the uh, so so now what you can do you you can rerun this uh, wall the uh, derivation of the first law. Okay, uh, I won't have time to do it in a minute. So 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 here is your ball on the boundary. That's the causal development on, of the ball. With, with that uh, vector field that goes like this. And then you can extend this vector field in the bulk. Uh, it's actually uh, gonna end up being some killing vector on ADS, which ends up having a killing horizon at actually the extremal surface that comes out here, okay? And since this is a killing horizon and you're looking at an exact killing vector, you can just rerun Walt's argument. And when you rerun it, uh, well, but you're not assuming the equations of motion, so, so, so you're having something like d k x c plus the omega term. The omega term is zero because you're having an exact killing vector. It's something that's proportional to the equations of motion. Uh, this guy ends up being uh, so, so when you integrate this over this tongue-shaped region, you, you can just rewrite it as a contribution from here minus a contribution from here. The contribution from here is nothing but the, the change in entanglement entropy, whereas this contribution is the change in the modular Hamiltonian. And they're equal by the first law. So then uh, what you end up uh, with is some uh, integral of the Einstein equations over this tongue-shaped region uh, has to vanish for any ball, for any center of the ball in any Lorentz frame. And you play with that and you get uh, that the Einstein equation has to be uh, valid at every point. So, so you manage to derive the Einstein equations from the consistency condition on tangle and entropy which is very similar to Jacobson idea, except that now you really know what entropy you're talking about. You're still making one assumption that's believed to be generally true in holographic CFTs, but then you, you really know which entropy you're talking about. So this cr gives credence to, to, the, to this idea of emergence of Einstein's equations, and then that's the correct way to, to think about it. Okay, I'm sorry to go over time, but that's it. Okay, thank you, Monica. Thanks for the wonderful lectures. And I don't think there is time for questions, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe two minutes while you are here and we switch uh, speaker. Uh, but we will, uh, I will start setting up everything. So let's uh, thank all together, Monica. <laughs>